So this section contains the first little hints of flash write protection in some of the optional material. I didn't make it mandatory because this information is usually set by tools provided by Intel, so it's rarely misconfigured. But for those of you who want to know all the possible ways that something could be misconfigured, you should watch the optional material for this section. But this first bit is required. And so what I want to talk about is the notion of when you're first trying to understand a system, you should generally understand how the flash is laid out. Certainly this is the first thing that I do when I do an assessment of a ROM or a firmware. If it's a white box evaluation, I ask the vendor to give me a full detailed map of all the different areas on the spy flash chip, how they're laid out, what's attacker controlled, what's not. Generally this has to do with whether or not portions are covered by digital signatures. So generally I want to understand how the flash layout works. If it's a black box evaluation, then this is always productive to get a sense of how the data is structured on the flash. Now I'm just going to very briefly go over how the spy flash on x86 systems is reused between the CPU for the BIOS, the management engine, gigabit ethernet, etc. All right, so zooming in on the spy flash chip, at the very beginning of the chip is that flash descriptor that is what gives descriptor mode its name. And the flash descriptor has a data structure unto itself, it's four kilobytes, and it looks like this, and we'll cover this in much, much more detail in the optional material after this. So the flash descriptor is all good, but what's interesting about it is that it lays out the definition of how the other information is stored on the flash chip. So it tells you about what sort of regions there are for things like the BIOS region, management engine, Intel gigabit ethernet, and so forth. And in particular, Intel adds things over time. So there didn't used to be a platform data region and there didn't used to be an embedded controller region, but these were added and specified in newer hardware and there's still room to add even more. These different regions can all be moved around except for the fact that the flash descriptor needs to be at region zero at the beginning of the chip because that's where the hardware expects to read it from. And the BIOS region needs to be at the end of the flash chip because that's what's going to be mapped up to the high memory range of four gigabytes. And the reset vector at the end here, minus hex 10 is going to be mapped to the reset vector in memory at FFFFF zero. But then the question is what's in the different regions? Well, in the case of Intel systems, there's a data structure called the firmware interface table. A pointer to that data structure exists at four gigabyte minus hex 40, and then it has something like this, and that has further pointers into further information. Like I said, one of the interesting questions always about firmware layout is what's covered by digital signatures, what's not, how does you know the secure boot chain thing work, things like that. And you know only this authenticated code module uh, that's right here, that's the thing that's covered by a digital signature, and that's what kicks off the secure boot chain on a maximally trusted Intel boot guard boot. So that could exist, but it might not exist. Generally speaking, the BIOS region on modern UEFI systems is gonna have some sort of file system, and specifically, UEFI lays out a particular data structure of firmware volumes, firmware files, and things like that. Alternatively, if this was a non-UEFI system, for instance, a core boot system, like you learn about in Architecture 4031, it could have a completely different file system organization. It's really up to the firmware maker how exactly they want to lay things out. Modulo the fact that they always have to have the reset vector at the end of the flash minus hex 10. So given this picture from the core boot documentation, if this is the start of the ROM and that's the reset vector, then we actually need to flip this upside down like this. Then we might ask ourselves what's inside the CSME region. And the Positive Technologies folks did a talk just on reverse engineering the data structure format of the management engine file system because they have their own firmware file system unto themselves, a proprietary and undocumented thing. And then also there's the Intel Gigabit Ethernet region. And you can find some documentation of what exactly is stored here at the cited documentation below and also at the data sheets for Intel Gigabit Ethernet controllers. I've never really looked at this particularly deeply. That's an interesting research opportunity if anyone wants to look into it. But to a quick skim, it doesn't look like it's containing, you know, primary and core firmware for the Ethernet itself. It seems to mostly contain a bunch of configuration type information. For instance, you can see that the first six bytes are bytes for the MAC address of the Ethernet. And then after that, you see things that you would expect from PCI devices like vendor ID, device ID, and so forth. So that's not to say there's not other interesting things here. I just haven't looked into it.
And then there's things like the platform data region and the embedded controller region. What do those look like? Well, as of right now, there's no public documentation. Now I'm sure the platform data region probably has proprietary Intel documentation, but I wasn't looking at any of that for the purposes of this class. And it's been a number of years since I've bothered to look at any of the Intel NDA documentation. So this is actually a research opportunity. In the same way that just reverse engineering the Intel management engine was a useful presentation, someone could go out and dig into how these things work and fully independently construct them without need for Intel proprietary documentation, and that would help other researchers.